A very good morning to you. Welcome to another beautiful day on television. Yes, it's the fourth day in the month of December 2023. My name is Alex Obunaya. I'm going to be your guide today on the dailies. Yes, but I'm not going to be alone. I have here with me Comrade Efe Odomo. Comrade, good morning. And um, okay, let me just join them by saying Happy New Week. Yes, Happy New Week. And I also welcome you back from your uh, very full day. Very true. Trip, and very I also true. welcome myself. Very true. Because two days last week I wasn't available also too. Okay, very true. Mm. Very true. Okay, so welcome to the program proper now. We have uh, four papers up for review. Uh, Punch newspaper, okay, I said Nation newspaper, Punch, Vanguard, and Guardian newspapers. Let's quickly uh, go through them like knife wood through butter. Uh, the Nation newspaper is our first port of call and the lead story, Senate House ready to pass budget 2024 before December 31st. Uh, federal lawmakers invite ministers, heads of agencies, security chiefs, others. That's the lead story on the front page. Banks screen manufacturers for 75 billion Naira palliatives loan. MSM ma nano firms get condition to access 200 <laughs> billion Naira facilities. Okay, uh, still on the front page of the nation newspaper. 10 INEC, okay, I'm not getting this right. 10 INEC directors out, that's on page 10. Ondo council chiefs resume and um, Okay, I'm going to take this one because it's more of an advertorial. Envoy, U.S. investors excited about Tunibu's economic agenda. FIRS waives penalties on outstanding tax liabilities. All of that you can get above the masthead of the nation newspaper. And let's come uh, below now. Um, APC clears all seats in Ikiti councils. And Ogun shots three more companies. That's uh, that from the Nation newspaper. Uh, let's quickly turn our attention to Punch now. Jackba hospitals reduce outpatient surgeries as 4,000 doctors migrate. Wow. Wow. Okay, that's, that's so much, if you ask me. Okay, still on the front page, this time above the mass head budget, National Assembly, six agencies allocation rise 40% to 1.4 trillion naira. Over 150,000 Nigerians applied for U.S. visa this year. That's according to Envoy in the U.S. Um, embassy. Tax default, FIRS waives fines, issues December the first deadline. Acquire bomb coppers in kidnappers then four months after abduction. It's turning out that they're doing the NYC in kidnappers then. That's a sad thing. Ogun police student killed in fresh robbery attack. That's also another serious issue too that needs to be addressed anger as lagos mechanic car crushes mother two children oh god that's a bad one mm. colonel colonel governor's aid arrested for alleged palliative looting and that's on page 14 and um, i think that'll be all from the punch newspaper let's quickly go straight to vanguard opera over nigeria's 100 nigeria's 1411 man delegation to cop 28 and uh, below that one comes this Nas national assembly committee to propose comments quick amendment of sections of pia after that again national assembly committee to propose comments quick amendment of sections of pia ex niger governor or niger state governor aliyu knocks non-leaders for setting region backwards Nigeria's economy begins major shift as oil sector rebounds. That's on page 19. And um, Afghan final squad, we won't tolerate bench warmers in Super Eagles. NFF warns per zero. Okay. And SGF to Nigerians, keep faith. There is hope for Nigeria. That's on page 8. And on page 25, Jack Rat, we interviewed over 150,000 Nigerians for visas in 2023. That's according to the U.S. Uh, uh, an embassy here in Nigeria and um, above the mass head NUC names new 11 NJC I beg your pardon names new 11 justices for Supreme Court this week how Intel's waived 193 million Naira debt to resolve stalemates over pilotage contracts or pilotage contract 
That's according to NPA. And finally, on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper, Alarm Bells, the Killer Effect of Inflation on the Economy by Muda Yusuf. That's that from the Vanguard newspaper. Our last paper up for review this morning is The Guardian, and it leads with an uh, oil-related story. Over 60 refinery licenses inactive 18 years after fuel import thrives. You can read up that story on page 6 of the Guardian newspaper. Cano uncovers diversion of palliatives, vows to punish culprits. Details are on page 28. Teachers hold suburb bus hostage, disrupt aptitude test in Dutse, NJC to select 11 new Supreme Court judges on Wednesday, failed road, female passenger dies, two injured in Lagos tanker accident. Mm. Reject weekly's 15 billion naira befitting residents for VP, Sarah urges Senate, and finally Knox trail federal government large allegation to COP28 alleged waste of resources. That story can be found on page 6 of the Guardian newspaper. Okay, yes, we've done justice now to all the dailies, four of them that we have uh, here with us. Let's now delve into uh, this, uh, the, 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 the stories, and that's where Comrade Odomo comes in. Two of them stand out to me. One, the delegation to COP in Dubai and then we can saying give me 15 billion to build a befitting residence for the vice president let's start with the delegation to COP 1411 yes just as it beats the imagination of any other person in the streets of Nigeria so so it did to me because when I saw the numbers I thought it was just a uh, ordinary publication to make the headlines mm. but when I went into it uh, properly I discovered that it was actually the truth and even show pictures as if uh, they were coming from a uh, even the largest uh, stadium in the world does not contain that i don't think so that we are in a uh, whenever i mean stadium of uh, just other spectators 1411 i think so yeah 111. are they going to how many halls did they provide for them in the first place and who sponsored that trip in how many aircraft did they go and which areas do they lodge what of the estacos that will have accompanied them when they are in that uh, jamboree now you are going to tell them that uh, you are a poor nation, they should write off your debt, they should give you more loans, and you are going with this bloated number of uh, delegates, uh, delegation. And how do you think that the person you are going to meet for such an issue will take you seriously? You see, the reason they say that if you go and draw debt, and the debt, the debt is telling you he has no money, only for you to get to his house, and he's using a, a turkey lap and chicken lap to drink a uh, gary, and he's telling you there is no money. You that even comes with your money now, possibly you tried. <laughs> and you want to believe that man that he has no money? So I don't think, uh, that I think something is wrong somewhere. Maybe they are not telling us the truth of actually what they went for. Because I don't think that thing is, is normal anywhere in the world, apart from the country where we are. And I, I pray that will improve. We cried and cried and cried for over eight years. There when uh, the last administration was in office. And there uh, were people said, okay, that uh, this new administration is going to correct and uh, right the wrongs. But I've not seen anywhere they have right uh, any wrongs. They've not uttered any tea, any, uh, neither cross any tea. And I don't know when they will start uh, doing that. I think we should start learning fast and make sure that we put our economy on a sound footing. We cannot continue like this, this jamboree for another uh, four, eight years. It is going to spell a doom for the country as a whole. Okay. Uh, let's look at um, uh, WK now. Um, Serap has urged Senate President to ignore WK's uh, appeal for 15 billion naira to build what he calls a befitting residence for the country's Vice President Kashim Shetima. 15 billion. Let me understand something. Is it a private resident of Mr. Pre of the, of Mr. Vice President or official that when he leaves another person will take over that house? Is, it, is he living in the hotel? Is, he doesn't he have a place he lives? We are talking of a, an economic, a crunchy situation. Are you are talking about that money? You have not been able to pay salaries to the civil servants. Even the minimum wage they are proposing has not taken place. And you are talking of 15 billion for one person. Why are they taking us for a ride or what? You know, there is this song they say that, hey, Frebo, be, Frebo, be careful you go wound. I said this some time ago. When we started all this uh, jamboree uh, issues, uh, bigger than uh, the law and bigger than the uh, uh, larger than life, we should be able to resize the economy. Let us take the positive things first and leave all this uh, uh, inglorious uh, attitude that we are backing upon. 
Mr. Our Vice President is not a, uh, he, he, he's not living on the street. He has a, a perfect accommodation already. Why build another 15 billion? On what basis are you doing that? <coughs> Sorry for that. Okay, excuse me. Okay, let me help you out there now. Okay, yes. Um, well, the Vice President, no doubt, has an accommodation where he lives. I guess probably there is no official, or maybe probably Wiki feels that it's outdated and they need a more befitting, you that know, let me borrow his word. Wiki, a if more nothing befitting, is going to come uh, at all, let it come from the Assembly, the National Assembly. Let the, let the presidency make a request, not the Wiki pushing that uh, something. Nobody asking. You just, look, you cannot uh, put the horse before the cat and then you expect uh, the cat to perform better. It's not possible. Let the man himself cry out that I don't have a befitting barrier. They let the National Assembly take it over from there. Is there any, is there any budgetary allocation for that? If not, where is he going to get the money to build that up? 15 billion can give you an estate, if well managed. If more than one estate even for that matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Jaguar syndrome seems to be, you know, biting this country from all corners. You know, two stories stand out here. One is Jack Barr, that's on the front page of Punch. Hospitals reduce outpatients, surgeries as 4,000 doctors migrate. And then uh, above the masthead of the Punch newspaper, over 150,000 Nigerians applied for U.S. visa in this year alone. That's for U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, you've not talked about well, other countries. Okay. Exactly. So what does this tell about this country? It is the full-blown manifestation of the level, high level of corruption in the country. Now look at these doctors that are going. Some of them will say that they are disgruntled. Some of them will say that they are not. Uh, uh, what do they call it? They, they are not. Uh, uh, they are not being loyal to their countries. It's not true. When you are using 15 billion to build a house for someone, and you cannot pay somebody his own salary for what he has done, the job he has done, they have not been able to pay him. How do, how do you look at it? Do you know what it takes to be a medical doctor? Let's. We are, we are talking about doctors now. I'm not going to use the word graduates generally. You know what it takes to become a medical doctor? How many years do you train in the university before you go for your housemanship? Before you round up and become a medical doctor? Do you know what it takes? Then this person will work for you for 30 good days. You are not going to pay him when you want to pay him. You attach uh, so many so many hiccups to it. They will go on strike. You will tell them, if you don't come to work, I will not pay you. you unless I will, you, uh, you, you work before I pay. All those things. If the condition is, 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 is okay by everybody, do you think anybody will be doing this? Imagine removing 150,000 uh, people from the from one sector of the economy in one year, and that is not the end. Not play, let us even say every other, every other country is now have about 20,000 people. Multiply it by the number of countries, add it to the 150,000 uh, 150, people from the health sector. Who are who is left there? That is what is making the private, uh, private uh, hospitals boom. Because Nobody wants to work without being paid. You have salaries, you, so you have families to take care of. Mm -hmm. You have a variable uh, cost to run. You have uh, your family expenses to cater for. No school will tell you that uh, your employer have not paid it, therefore you will not pay the children. Yes, it's yes, not yes. possible. And no other market woman will tell you, take whatever you want to take, go home, when they pay your salary, come and uh, settle. Mm -hmm. Nobody will do that. Neither will the market women go to hinterland to go and bring their, their wares and they will tell them, okay, when you sell, when they, when they pay you, come and pay me. Nobody does that anymore. It is cash and carry business. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot do that business, let the people go. But we have not channeled our economy. We have not channeled our thinking. We have not channeled the, 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 the arrow of this country in the very right direction. We never expected these things from this very present administration because of the type of people that are, are in charge. They're in charge. Yes, yeah, so we are thinking that when, when, when this government sits and they settle down, which they have already, nobody will tell me they've not settled down after many months, mm -hmm. and we're still talking about all these things. It's, it's not supposed to be. A child that will be very brilliant in the, in the future, you know them from the crowd, the way they play, the way they, the way they laugh, the way they gesticulate, and all those things. But we have started on epileptic na uh, nature. I don't think we should continue this way. Okay. Um, the fate of um, scores of Aquaibum State core members is still hanging in the balance. They set up to, you know, go to their places of uh, national youth service. Primary school, assignment. But unfortunately, they have been kidnapped. Four months down the line, they're still, uh, they're still um, in the hands of their abductors. Well, are they now, they are, are they now doing their youth service in the hmm. kidnappers' den? Well, uh, of course, uh, they, they, they are doing it illegally in the, in the kidnappers' den. But you see, one thing we have not gotten right, was it not last week? Yes, that uh, the governor of... Uh, this uh, is Zulu, pardon, uh, and reintegrated over 60,000 uh, uh, terrorists. 
Is that the way we should go? When you, if you think you want to fight terrorism, you are pardoning them and reintegrating them. Is that how it should go? Look at what happened in Burkina Faso. How they treated their, their terrorists. Look at what is happening in uh, Hamas and Israel uh, conflict. That is how you. Well, if you want to tell the government, federal government what to do so that they will not think uh, or they will not say I'm in support of any of these things. But as you think, by the time you pamper these people, they will have the power to do more. Mm -hmm. What they are doing is a cash cow business. If you are doing a cash cow business, nobody stops it. You cannot be making, you cannot be doing a business today that you are making almost 10 million naira every day. Somebody come and advise you that, hey, uh, please drop that business. It's not good. Nobody will do that. Unless, of course, you use uh, some coercive uh, uh, efforts to take that business from these people. Now, you have trained your child up to that level. You are happy that one day the child will come, well, come out of the out of the system and you begin to enjoy you have invested because the best investment in the world is what you put on your children now somebody will not keep that person in captivity the fate of that person you don't know the hard when they are coming out you don't know if they won't come at all, at all you don't know the government is not saying anything the used coppers are good as the military uh, uh, they are paramilitary of course they are serving the nation they are in this condition. The federal government, the state government has not said anything about it. What we are doing to rescue these people that is not there. You left them to their feet. Somebody raised a motion some time ago that let everybody serve in the state. They say no, it is it is a, it is a, a, a lot of a national interest. When you want me to serve national interest and my security is not there, I am not being protected by front, left, and right. And you want me to continue to serve national interest. I cannot go to school, finish school, come back and end up in the gallows of somebody without knowing how my tomorrow is. You can imagine the, the trauma those people will be going through now. That is if they are still alive there. Some of them will have been married off, of course, which is very possible. And uh, what is the fate of those people? What is the government telling us about all this? If they know they cannot protect people, let everybody protect themselves. It's not a call for anarchy. But if there, is any, if there is any breakdown of law, not that, the federal government should be held responsible for not being able to do what they should do at the appropriate time. Mm. Yeah, and another issue we want to look at is also closely related to this, but um, students of Ogun State Polytechnic. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can... Okay, yeah, I've seen it now. The Punch newspaper again has a story. Ogun Poly student killed in fresh robbery attack. This robbery is the second in about... Um, in, in less than a month or thereabouts, where you know these students have come under, you know, what does it say about attack students? I you think know? it's a case of a uh, courtism in the coloration of a uh, robbery. Mm, okay. What is so special in that school that they are attacking? What are they robbing from the students? What are they collecting from the students? Is it their phones or their books? So if something happens, if something is happening too many times, then they should, the authorities should need to set up an investigative uh, panel to look into all these uh, issues. If there is something beyond robbery, they should be able to start something. Like Why don't they be for security? They, they, you did this for the first time, some students were, were shot and even some time. Second time again, who knows if they will not come for the third time? What is the school management doing? What is the state government doing? What is the local, the, the local communities around that area doing? Uh, those boys that are coming for the robbery, are they also students of that school or they are coming from another place? It would be too difficult for them to come from outside, penetrated the school and committed havoc and committed the havoc they, 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 they committed and left without anybody tracing them. Something must be wrong somewhere. Mm -hmm. I can see the hand of uh, uh, Esau and the voice of Jacob in this matter. The government should do more, unless of course, because somebody, our former head of state, the time goes the late head of state, the general assembly, but I said, if the riots, yes, the riots, all rest last more than 24 hours. The government of the day has it happened. Exactly, he said that. Okay, I think we really have run out of time, but let's see if we can just quickly touch this one. Nation newspaper, Senate House ready to pass budget, uh, next year's budget before December 31st. How possible can that be? Yes, it is possible. If they have finished the debate, if they have finished, uh, finished correcting or adding and deducting uh, from uh, the, the estimate, it is possible to, to pass it. You know, you will, will, it be, will it be enough, the time between now and then, will it be enough to give the budget a thorough scrutiny and maybe uh, put the president, uh, what's the word now I'm looking for, uh, make, make the president defend the budget, you know, in its entirety? Have they not been screening people who take, take a bow and go? Okay, that's yes. basically what I'm saying this. Yeah, yeah, they've been screening people who take a bow and go, some of them will call from home. There was one screening they did and they said this person attended the... Uh, case college, therefore, must be a good person. He should, should be given a ministerial appointment. Okay. There is nothing different from it in this one. The president must have briefed them in the past. 
And when they were preparing this budget, they must have also been going along with Mr. President and every other person that are involved. Okay. So I'm afraid I may have to stop you at that point. I've just been uh, signaled to uh, wrap up the show. Yes, and um, Michael Guberdia is standing by for Quest today. Thanks for being part of us or part, uh, part of the program uh, with us. I want to also thank Comrade if it were to for his expert analysis on the topics that we treated from the dailies. My name is Alex Obunaya. I also want to say thank you to Vanguard newspapers and the guys who are behind the scene. You're not seeing them, but they're doing wonders, pressing the right buttons so that you can hear us and see us very clearly. My name is Alex Obunaya. Good morning and um, enjoy the rest of your day.